redemption to this earth through a new generation. Was Noah perfect? Of course not. Was his wife perfect? Of course not. She was a wife. Were his kids perfect? No. Were his kids' spouses perfect? Tampoco. But because of Noah's faithfulness, God was going to redeem them as well. So God speaks to Noah and he tells him, Noah, I am so disgusted with what's going on in the world. I'm going to wipe them away with rain. And Noah's like, God, what's rain? Water that falls from heaven. Oh, okay. But I need for you to build a ship, Noah. God, what's a ship? It's like a boat. God, what's a boat? It's something that floats made out of wood. Ah, está bueno. So then God gives Noah specific instructions on what he's supposed to make, of how he's supposed to build the boat. He tells him what type of wood, the measurements, where to get it from, and Noah obeys. Say, Noah obeyed. What happens when you disobey? You dishonor God. Therefore, you are dishonored because you're not walking in your faith of obedience. Faith pleases God. And if you don't have faith, you're not pleasing God. What happens when someone doesn't please you? They get on your bad side. Do you want to be on God's bad side? No. So Noah obeys. And he goes to his sons and he tells his sons, Guys, I'm going to need your help. Yeah, sure, Dad. What are we going to do? We're going to go build an ark. Dad... What's an ark? It's like a big boat. Dad, what's a boat? It's a floating thing made out of wood. Ah, okay, we say so. He goes to the woods with a permit from God and he brings wood, but he knows that he needs tools. So he goes to his neighbor that just got stuff at Harbor Freight and he goes, hey, vecino, because you know Bible people are Hispanic. <laughs> yes, Noah, I need to borrow your tools. Sure, man, take all you need. What are you going to build? An ark. Noah, what's an ark? Uh, like a boat. Noah, what's a boat? It's like a floating thing made out of wood. Oh, okay, I guess. <laughs> so then he goes back home and his wife sees him get home with all this wood and his son's helping him. And then he says, she, she asked him, Noah, what are you doing? God spoke to me, woman, don't bother me. But women want to know everything. What are you going to do? I'm going to build an ark. Noah, what's an ark? It's like a boat. Noah, what's a boat? It's like a floating thing made out of wood. Okay, Noah, you're tripping me out. You know, women are more vocal. So everybody else just said, oh, okay. But the wife is like, Noah, I would have expected this in your midlife crisis years when you were a couple hundred years old, but now you're 500, Noah. So then he says, woman, I got to do it because God ordered me to do this. So he sets off and he starts to build that boat. And while he's building that ark, the people are walking by. And Noah, what are you doing? I'm building an ark. What's an ark? It's like a boat. What's a boat? It floats made out of wood. Why does it need to float? Because God promised that rain's going to fall. Noah, yes. What's rain? Water that comes from the sky. Noah, you're insane. I can't know. God told me. And it's going to come and it's going to keep on raining and it's going to flood. And if you do not get into this ark when I give you the opportunity to, you will drown. And you know what people start saying? Ah, loco. It's not true. How can it rain de arriba para abajo if it's always raining de abajo para arriba? And you know, the time was going by and he was advancing on the ark and people were mocking him and laughing at him and he needed to be encouraged. So then he goes over to his grandpa. His grandpa that was Methuselah was 969 years old. Wow. Isaiah, can you imagine having a client that's 969 years old and still alive? When you see at a funeral like that, oh, he left us too soon. <laughs> so he goes over to his grandpa. His dad had already been gone, but his grandpa was still alive. And he says, Welito, ¿qué pasó, mijo? I have an issue. What's going on? He says, 
I'm not finding any support. My wife thinks I'm a ridicule. My neighbors are making fun of me. People that walk around are looking at me. When they ask me what I'm doing, they mock me and they laugh at me and they tell me I'm local. And, and then the grandpa asked him, well, what are you doing, Noah? And he says, I'm building an ark. Uh, Noah, what's an ark? Do you ever get tired of just hearing the same questions all the time? But people don't don't but people don't support you. They just say, Oh well, I mean, I guess it's never been done before, but might as well do it if you want to. And no one tells them what God spoke to him, and no one tells him the way God told him to build it, and no one tells him what he's supposed to do and why he's supposed to do it, and what's gonna happen if they don't get on the ark. And God tell and Noah tells and Methuselah tells Noah. Mira, mijito. I don't know what an ark is. I don't know what that thing's supposed to look like. But if God told you to build it, you better build it. And if God told you that something's coming, it's going to come. And if God told you to get the people on the ark, get the people on the ark. Because God is not a human. He is not man to lie. And he will not go back on his word. Because whatever he promises is yes and amen. And that's the type of encouragement that no one needed. And he went and he finished the ark. And the Lord told him to get two of each species, male and female, into the ark, even the roaches. And once they were there on the boat, once he called people to come in and nobody wanted to go in. And it started to rain and it started to flood. The Bible says that the very hand of God shut the door to the ark. And no one or anybody else could open it back up. But this is the thing. It started to rain. And the Bible says that Noah held the first barbecue of history. He made a sacrifice. And then his Juanito died. My point is this. You are here for a reason. You aren't going through what you're going through for a reason. And nobody is going to get rid of you on the face of this earth. No one's going to get rid of your ministry. No one's going to get rid of your calling. No one's going to get rid of your peace and your family until it is God's will for you to leave this earth. And when you leave this earth, it's because God called you by name. And the devil still was defeated. Because we serve a purpose. Now, I want to get into another story. I've shared this story before. I'm sure Rosie remembers it. If not, I'll be hard pressed. There was these two girls that were going to school in Florida. Let's call one of them Fruitcake. And the other one is called her Jenny. So, Jenny needed a roommate, and she had put a sign in the student union of the University of Florida, I need a roommate. Fruitcake was trying to save money, so instead of having an apartment on her own, she decided to go and go half seas with Jenny. While they were there, Jenny starts to think that Fruitcake is kind of weird because Fruitcake is a Christian. And she starts calling her fruitcake. Jenny comes from a background where her parents are divorced. Jenny used to go to church when she was a little girl because Walita would take her. But as she kept on growing and her parents got divorced and her dad remarried and had another child, she began to hate God. Have you ever been there where you just maybe don't hate God but you question God or you dislike God very, very, very much? Asking why this happened, wondering what things could have changed, even blaming yourself for things that happened in your life. And so, Jenny no longer goes to church. As a matter of fact, she dislikes Christians because they're very judgmental and because they look down on you and because they feel they're so perfect. So from the very beginning, when Jenny found out that Fruitcake was a Christian, she says, look, Fruitcake, I know you're weird. I have a boyfriend. I'm not living a holy life, 
but I don't want you to judge me. You and I, there's a line, you're just paying half of the rent, stick to your side, I'll stick to my side. Well, the day came when uh, Jenny was doing her morning jog and she saw that some other girl that she knew was walking out of her boyfriend's apartment and Jenny was so heartbroken that she went home and sat in the kitchen and all she was doing was eating ice cream. Fruitcake walks in and she sees Jenny sitting at the table crying and eating ice cream. So what did Fruitcake do? She goes and got some, gets some ice cream herself. She sits at the table and she starts to eat ice cream along with Jenny. No questions asked, no judgment. She was just there. Until Jenny asked Fruitcake, what is wrong with you? Why aren't you judging me? Why aren't you asking me why I'm crying? Why aren't you telling me that I deserve whatever is happening to me? And then Fruitcake turns around and tells Jenny, because Jesus wouldn't judge you. Jesus would simply love you. The Father.